Well, this is my latest tool acquisition. It's a wood fast wood lathe, 900 mil centers, 900 millimeter centers. Um, it's an old thing. I'm not sure what era it is. It's got a maker plate. It says wood fast on there, but I don't know what else, what era it is. I do believe it's from, uh, it's an old school uh, wood lathe. It's really heavy cast iron. It needs good cleanup. Uh, I think it's perfectly functional as it is, but parts of it are quite rusty and just needs a bit of uh, a bit of TLC. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'll be making a stand for it as well. Uh, along the way, I need to introduce uh, a good a good mate of mine who lives around the corner there, Dale Cordwell. He's the inspiration for interest in wood lathing. I'm interested in all sorts of wood lathing, but, but Dale's a bit of a champion. And I'll introduce you to Dale along the way. He's, uh, he's an amazing man. Let's get this stripped down and, and the clean up underway. That is a stinking roach egg. Stinking thing. Get out. Hey. Man. That was in there. It won't beat me. Yuck! Yuck, I hate roaches. Bought second hand for 50 bucks. Disgusting. Well, that'd be a bugger to have to change a belt on this thing. That bearing was just pushed out using that.
I'm looking at doing is cleaning up those uh, rusty parts with some plain white vinegar. Cheapest stuff I can find in the store. I reuse it. I put it back in the container once I've finished with it on the job. So citric acid, what it does is just attacks that scaly surface, the rust on the, the steel parts. You use this in your coffee machines to clean out all the coffee um, residues and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's a pretty good product. So I've cleaned this with vinegar, I've degreased everything, and now I'm using citric acid. Just a, um, I think you're supposed to use one or two tablespoons per one litre of water. All the chisels are pretty nasty as well. I might uh, might pay to clean these up on the citric acid wash. I'll try and get the handles off. These have all been left in overnight. Oi. And put that back in the acid, uh, citric acid, see if we can get some of those pits out, but it's still a good handle, but it's just covered in pits, that's okay. I really am a glutton for punishment. I've got simultaneous projects going on at the moment. Just got this Hercus 260 lathe, replacing my, my Sig C6 lathe. It's just got more capability, this machine here. Manual gear changes, well, lever, toggles, what are you going to call them. Still working on the wood lathe. And of course my shed's a mess because I had to rearrange everything to get this guy in yesterday. I guess the project would be to put some paint on the, uh, the body of the lathe waiting for the bearings to turn up that way when they do turn up the paint should have dried by then and I uh, won't be bruised and marked and marred
Paint stripped all the parts best I can. Just gonna use a bit of Scotch Brite to try and knock off the rest of the little dags and smooth things out best I can. And that'll be as much effort as I'm willing to put into it. I'll use some edge primer and then put some top coat over the top of that. These old bearings aren't too bad. One's notchy, this one's a little bit notchy. So um, I've decided to put all three new bearings in there. So if it's apart, why not? We really should. New bearings and new belts. So I'm just gonna put a bit of thin machine oil on all the surfaces and just start assembling everything up. Here you can see me assembling the bearings into the housing and it's really in the wrong order. The bearings needed to go onto the shaft first, but you can see here that I'm actually making a mistake and I pull these bearings out later once I realize my folly. Silly me. How am I going to get this key in? As much as I hate to admit it, this shaft has got to come out including these bearings in the same as the reverse order as when as it came apart originally. It's just been a few days and I'm just a bit slow. And the reason for that is there's no way I can get the key in the keyway fitting it in with everything together like that. So the way this is set up is that the bearings, spaces and key must be fitted to the shaft and then that, that as an assembly goes into the housing, slide the pulley on and uh, that way the key can slide straight into the, into the pulley and away you go from there.
Next part's to make the, the legs. So I've just sketched out a, uh, a basic shape there. But I need to work out where the belt sits to, uh, to weld in a cross member. So I'll just do a little bit of rearranging here and uh, I'll come up with that answer in just a moment. The motor. The motor at pretty much the lower spot's going to be there. It's going to measure down, measure down from here to the foot or the food. Look here. On the steel legs I used etch primer and then I used a two-pack paint. It's very durable the two-pack but I don't spray paint two-pack in the neighborhoods because I don't have proper filtration. You end up getting overspray on people's cars and that's dramas plus it's very stinky. It's not very pleasant to smell so I just use a brush and it's simple enough and doesn't take long and it's done. You can see the maker plate there, it's heavily dented. I did my best to try and dress those dents out because um, I wanted to apply some paint. It proved problematic to try and get the paint uh, on there and also then clean up the, the raised portions of the wood fast lettering. But you'll see, I did my best. It's not perfect, it looks vintage. <laughs>
I'm assembling the switch here. I know it looks out of place. Um, I'm on the hunt for a vintage switch and I'll replace this at a later date, but it's functional and fine for the time being. The restoration is finally complete. I'm very happy how it turned out. I'm glad it's a, a, a vintage Australian machine um, and it's going to have plenty of years of useful service left in it. Being my first one, I've got a lot to learn with lathing. So Dale has come over and he'll give me a bit of a hand to uh, discover the, the joys of wood turning. I'm on. Hey, welcome. Welcome into the former industrial shed there, Dale. Scott, thanks for the invite, mate. Good to <laughs> see you around the corner. What we've got here is Dale Caldwell, and he's, if you look on Instagram at uh, Dale Bassett Timbers, That's you'll, me. you'll see him and uh, all his good work that he's doing. So Dale is a, um, what I'd say, uh, a master of wood turning, and he's got a few things to, to show me, and I've got a lot to learn. I've got my old plates on. Uh, what he's done, Dale's been kind enough to bring over some uh, some timbers. and it's I'll bit of wood. I was looking at making a mallet, uh, we're going to turn it on this lathe here yep. and... Uh... Well, we're dealing with a 50 year old machine and it was originally designed for school base use but the history of it goes back a little bit older than that. Uh, but they're bulletproof, they are meant to be used and abused and uh, yeah, let's crank it up and have a bit of a crack. Oh, let's, we'll get this thing set up. Sweet brother! So with that grind, we've got a little bit of a problem because we've got a bit of a catch waiting to happen. See how we've got one side of those, the top there, yeah. up here, yep. that's higher than the other? Yep. We want to have a nice even flow around there. So we need to whack that back on the grinder. Mm. Even though we want the wings to sweep back, you know, that's okay, but we want this to be nice and flowing around this way. Right. Because uh, otherwise we've got nothing to work with on the bevel and when you try and move, especially if you're turning the other way, that's going to grab. Sure. So let's not do that. Back to the grinder. All right, let's get it fixed up. Be able to cut with that, and we're going to be able to cut safely, and that's the main thing. Okay, so I'm on a bit of a a bit of an angle that I'm not quite used to turning, so I'm down a little bit lower than what I should be. Because uh, realistically, you want to be turning at the same height as where your elbow is. That's the safest height to be able to do it. So I'm sort of turning a little bit cack-handed here, but you know. In for a penny, in for a pen. Yeah, I've got it all on camera, mate, so it should be interesting. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm off the bevel there, and you can actually hear it. So part of the rule when you're turning is you turn fast and you sand slow. So we've got that not cranked up but going fairly quick, but now we want to sand it slow because we don't want the paper to be jumping over all the ridges and the side grain and the end grain. Come up nice. Alright, let's have a look at that. Yep. So there's a couple of little lines there, but it's a law of diminishing turn returns. It's a hammer. But we call it a thwackometer. Thwacker. Woody goodness. We have a thwacker. That's a thwackometer. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dale. I really appreciate your help on that, mate. I learned a lot. Too easy, brother. Chisel <laughs> angles. Yep. Everything, mate. So I really appreciate it, mate. Good, Good fun, man. Man. Champion, eh? Sweet, brother. Till, till next time. Yes. <laughs> All right, mate. Stay safe. Just in closing here, just want to encourage you to go check out Dale's Instagram page. He's got quite the following. And let me know if you want to see more of Dale in the YouTube videos, as Dale is thinking about setting up a YouTube channel. Anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> filthy. Yeah, filthy, all right. <laughs> yeah, it does.